Today we're going to cover the people tab of the Connect Shortel Connect desktop client. So as you can see, we've got several different tabs here. You may or may not see work groups listed. If you've got those enabled and you're part of an agent uh, group within work groups, you would also have this tab. But for many people, they're just going to have events, recent people, and then of course their own information. And as I said, for this video, we're going to concentrate on people. So if I click on the people tab, it actually opens up my listing. And I have, um, you've got two different views that you can see. I'm looking at my favorites right now. And so let's go ahead and go through that first. So you can see, first of all, my absolute favorite, don't tell anybody else, Jason Bow is actually on the phone. And you can see both because of the orange stripe beside his name and also very, very helpful. It says he's available, but he's on the phone. And this would mean, you know, generally that he's available, like not in a meeting uh, or possibly available for an instant message, but definitely on the phone. You can see that Ryan Graven is actually getting a call, which is why this is actually pulsing orange instead of a solid orange. Daniel, again, on the phone. Here's Kyle. Kyle is showing as being available, which is nice. I can call him and, and get him as I need him. Here's Chrysia, same sort of thing. And let's say that um, Anson, I don't really call Anson as much as I used to. So I have him listed here as a favorite, the little gold star, but it's just as easy to unfavorite Anson. And he no longer has a gold star. But so let's say that I really do want to put Anson back in because I realized that, yeah, we're going to actually be doing a lot of work together on a particular project. I can just come right here and type Anson's name. And I don't even have to like click on this to highlight it. I can just click right here on the little gold star. And now Anson is, is here and ready for me. And so I'll go ahead and hit the people tab again. And there's Anson, ta-da! He's back on my favorites list. So super simple. Once again, just to go back to show you what this looks like. So you type the person's name and you may or may not notice right here, you've got a little place for a gold star. Something that I often mention in these videos, and I'll mention again to you, is that the default on someone's name is to have it be blank like this, which I just don't like at all. And so if you right click, you can show phone number, and that's going to show you their extension. It's going to show you their DID if you're using those. If you've got mobile or home fields also filled in, it would show you those things. It just makes it a lot easier because I can never remember anyone's extension. So at least having this as a visual, sometimes it actually will cement into my mind for certain people. So again, if you right click and say show phone number, you're going to have all of that information instead of just a blank screen. So let's go back to the people tab. So that's the favorites. It's just a nice quick way to grab the people that you usually talk with to you know, conference them in on a call, get a call to them, that sort of thing. The other really, really useful thing, and if you're coming from uh, Shortel uh, 14 or earlier and you're used to Communicator, the groups give you a similar feel to your old contacts tab. So I've got several groups already created, and then down here I can show you what it looks like to create a new one. So once again, here under operations, I've got Daniel and Joy and Kimberly, David and Eric are all of the people that I consider part of our operations team. You can see Daniel's still on the phone, which is fine. I don't need Daniel right now, it's okay. But here's Joy, Kimberly, all of those guys show that they're available. Under my client services tier one group, Here's David Simpson. He's actually out of the office today. Completely, he's off. And so he's got a red bar beside his name. So I know that I'm not going to be able to get a hold of him. So you can have all sorts of, of different groups, as you can see, test groups. I've got my running group. I've got, you know, obviously the operations folks. So if I go ahead and click on operations, it extends out. And let me just make this bigger so you guys can see. So here's the operations group, and I have three main things that I can do within this group. I could go ahead and start a group chat, which is great if you need to get information out to, say, this entire group. Um, you know, something really exciting like, you know, hey team, I've created those new item IDs that we needed for the new equipment that's coming in. You know, something equally as, as exciting uh, in your business, I'm sure, where you need to actually get some information to a lot of folks. 
And maybe for whatever reason, it's just, it's so quick, you don't even really want to worry about email. It's just a nice, simple way to get the information to the group that needs it. You could also schedule a meeting with this whole group. And once again, if you've got um, Outlook integration, we've looked at the events uh, videos uh, that I've done in the past. This screen looks completely familiar to you. And you can see, I'll go ahead and go through this because it's really, really great. So let's say we're going to do, um, this is a demo meeting. And we're actually going to make this for tomorrow. So tomorrow at 9 a.m., this meeting is going to last probably just 30 minutes. So 30 minutes just to demo for everybody what's going on. It's collaborative, obviously. I'm organizing it. Here's everybody who may or may not need to actually present. So I want everyone to be able to have access to, um, to all of the information. And so it's the entire group. Everybody's in there. Let's say I remembered, like, oh my gosh, Daniel is actually not even going to be here tomorrow. I can tell him about this later. Let me go ahead and get the rest of the group. And so I'll just take Daniel out, and now I've got everybody else. I love this feature. You can actually create your agenda right here, and this little bar is going to tick along during your meeting, and everybody would be able to see it because you're sharing screens, and see how much time is passing, how much time was allotted to the various agenda items. So let's say um, I need to do an intro, and that's going to be uh, five of my only 30 minutes. And let's say, you know, um, uh, spreadsheet, which is so exciting, demo of new spreadsheet, that's going to be uh, 15 minutes. I only got 10 minutes left. So, um, and then last, just kind of a recap and slash questions. And that's my last 10 minutes. I did the math right. So here's where I would do a meeting overview. Um, so there's that. And if you actually have Dropbox integration um, with your Shortel, you could actually drop in a copy of that spreadsheet so that everybody has it in front of them. Uh, you know, you're demoing it from your own screen, but everybody's got a copy of it, or they've got the, the brochure that shows the specs or, you know, whatever it might be. Everybody could have a document that, that they had in front of them, you know, on their own computer or, you know, printed out in front of them. Once you're ready and you've got your agenda set, you, you know who you're inviting to this, and it's super easy because it's actually people out of your groups that you've created you can go ahead and create the actual invite. And it says it's opening Outlook. And here's my group. Uh, let me make this bigger for you. So how super simple is that? I've got everybody listed who needs to be in this meeting. So as you can see, everybody's email. This is, they've got the subject line already set up. This is the, the participant code so that when they call into um, the Shortel Conference Bridge, they're getting the participant code so that they're getting to the right place. Here's the overview. Here's my agenda. And here's telling people how to join in. So super, super, super easy. I love this feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this and get back to that later. And pull back up people. So once again, here's how I got there. So I've got my groups. I just clicked on it. And I hit schedule meeting with group. And I went on my little journey from there. The last thing that you can do, get rid of this so you see this a little better. The last thing you can do is certainly send out a group voicemail if you needed to. Uh, you click on this icon and it's going to start ringing your phone. You pick up, it hits the little beep, and you get a chance to go ahead and do your group voicemail. Not a feature that people use very much anymore. Uh, it certainly would be a little bit quicker than, than email, but depending on what sort of message you need to send, it might actually be more work um, than sending an email for the, the people who are receiving this information. But it can be a really quick way to, to send something to everybody that says like, hey group, I just sent out a calendar invite. I'm actually going to do an update because I realized that I wanted to invite a couple more people, you know, so stay tuned, something like that. Super easy to do. And once again, as you're looking at all these things that you're about to do with your group, it's reminding you of who all is in your group. And also allowing you here to edit this if you realize like, oh my gosh, 
I forgot completely that I really, really, really should have Lexi in here as well. I can just click here, and here's Lexi. Now she is part of the operations team. If I save the changes, and I come back to people, and I look at my operations, there's Lexi. She is also there and ready for whatever's going to happen. So that's how to manipulate an existing group and do uh, three main uh, actions here. You can chat, schedule a meeting with everyone, and then also send a group verbal message if you needed to through the voicemail. So I'm going to minimize this really quickly. If I click back on people, I want to show you the next important feature, which is you could create a new contact and you can create a new group. So let's click on contact first. So as you can see, I've got a little screen peeking out here. It's automatically opened up my Outlook calendar. I can create the contact here, and then it's going to populate back into here and be a new contact for me. It's super nice feature. Um, so very simple. You click the new contact, it pops up your Outlook and gives you all of the information that you need there to create your contact so that in the future it's integrated between both your um, Shortel Connect client and your Outlook. Creating a new group, super easy. I'm just going to minimize this so you can see a little better. So here's our new group. So here's the group name. And let's say I'm going to call this group trainers. So now I can just start uh, naming off people. So let's say I need Madden in this group. I definitely need Daniel in this group. He is still on the phone. Um, Jason is a huge help when it comes to uh, training. And then let's say I also want to get uh, Latoya in on this. So I've got these four people are the folks that are going to help me uh, with training and, and, you know, I will need to be able to contact them all as a group for, say, scheduling a meeting, you know, touching on a particular point for future training, that sort of thing. So I've got the group name. I know who my members are, at least to begin with. And as you've seen, it's super simple to uh, edit. And for some reason today, everything is super. So that's, that's kind of nice. So now I'm ready to go ahead and save my changes. And I'm done. So let me come back to people and I'll show you. Here's my training. Oh, how funny. I already made a training group, but here's my trainers. And these are other people. You can see Daniel. I like to pick on Daniel. So here's my trainers group that I just created. Latoya, Jason, Daniel, and Madden. They're all ready for action and for me to um, get everything together for them. Let me just actually click on the training group itself. And I can say that I'm going to edit the group and actually delete this group because I realized I just recreated a different one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the group. And it's like, oh my gosh, are you sure you want to delete this group? And yes, I do. So I come back to people. And now I've got trainers, but no training. So nice way to just kind of clean this up. And in fact, let me just show you how to do that again. So I click on my test group. So here's my test group, and if I go to edit, I can delete, or obviously I could add more members, which is what it thinks I want to do. But in this case, I do want to delete this group. So here are my people. So once again, this is the people tab. As you can see, we've got groups, which is a great way to group together people to say what functions they do within your organization, or functions that you do for fun with them at lunch or after work. And then I've got, you know, salespeople. And it's a nice, simple way to quickly get information to a group of people. Start a group chat on your instant message, schedule a meeting with them through Outlook integration, or send everyone a voicemail if you need to just get some verbal information out to everybody all at once. On the other hand, you also have Make this smaller. On the other hand, you also have your favorites. And this is a place to kind of keep track of the people that you're contacting all the time to make it so that Shortel is, is bringing these people to the front when you need to do a transfer or making it super simple when you start to type for them that they're going to pop up for you very quickly. So here we are.
You can unfavorite somebody very easily by taking the gold star away. And then if you needed to actually bring somebody back in, oh, Chrissy already has a gold star, but I can quickly do the gold star for her. And there she is in the group. That is the people tab. And I hope you enjoyed the video.